I'm sure that you are familiar with the story of Esther in the Bible. It's a remarkable story uh, about a young Jewish lady that God allowed to marry uh, the most powerful man on the earth at that time, the emperor of the Persian Empire. And uh, she replaces his uh, other wife, Vashti. She replaces, Esther replaces her. And uh, this was of the Lord because as the story develops, you find the enemy of Esther's people, uh, a fellow by the name of Haman. Haman develops a plot to commit genocide, to, to terminate the entire Jewish race, to kill off every Jew in the Persian Empire. And when he was developing that plot, that evil plot, he did not realize that Esther, the queen, was a Jew. And so when word got out, that Haman was uh, going to have all the Jews in the Persian Empire killed, uh, Esther's cousin by the name of Mordecai, who was also a high-ranking official in the Persian Empire, he goes to Esther and he tells her, this is why God put you in this position. You're here for such a time as this. This is no accident. God orchestrated this and put you in this unique position so that you can have the ability to save our people. Because if anyone is going to be able to plead with the king so that the Jews would not be slaughtered, if anyone is going to be able to do that, it's go it's you, Esther. No one is in a better position to convince the king to not allow the genocide of the Jewish people to happen. You're the best one in position to put a stop to that. But what I want you to notice, and you know the story, Esther did just exactly that, and God uh, reversed that evil plot. Haman instead was killed, and the Jews won a great victory. You know the story. But what I want you to notice is when Mordecai was making his argument as to why Esther needed to do something about this, he says something very interesting in verse number 14 of Esther chapter 4. He says, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Notice what Mordecai says to Esther. He says, if you don't do something about this, even though you are the best person to do something about this, but if you don't take advantage of, your, of the opportunity and of your position to save our people, then God will raise someone else, so someone else up that, that'll do it instead. I want you to see the point here. In other words, he's saying, Esther, this really is something for you to do, but if you won't do it, God will use someone else to do it. And you know, that's a very important lesson to learn in life because too many times, in our pride, we'll get to thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. And we'll think, you know what? I'm irreplaceable. But the truth of the matter is you're not. I don't know how many times I've seen people in churches that didn't get their way or things didn't go the way that they wanted it to. And they were offended about it. And they thought to themselves that the way that they were going to punish the preacher or whoever it is that was involved, the way that they were going to get them back was, well, that's it. I quit. I'm leaving. 
If you if things are not going to go my way, then I'm going to step down or I'm not going to be involved or I'm going to go do something else or I'm going to go somewhere else. And listen, as a pastor, I love everybody. And it is sad to see anyone step down or to or for the wrong reasons. Sometimes folks will step down for legitimate reasons, maybe even good reasons. That's a, a, that's something else. I'm talking about people that do it with a, for a malicious reason, for the reason of you know I'm gonna this is how I'm gonna get them back. I'm gonna show them a thing or two. I'll step away, and uh, that'll show them. Uh, the, when they see how much they miss me. Well, we probably will miss you, but not exactly for the reasons that you think. Because the fact of the matter is, if you won't do what needs to be done, especially if it's God's will for you to do it, if you won't do it, I'm going to tell you the same thing Mordecai said to Esther. God will use somebody else to do it. Too many times someone someone thinks to themselves, oh, well, this will this will really show them. I don't know about that. God may just give that opportunity to someone else. And as a matter of fact, the person that they give it to who will replace you, they might even do it better than you. And I can demonstrate that from the word of God. Look at 1 Samuel chapter number uh, 15. And here's another familiar story in the Bible. This was the time when God instructed King Saul, the first king of Israel. They were at war. Israel was at war with the Amalekites. And God told King Saul, when you go to battle against the Am Amalekites, I want you to wipe them all out with no exceptions. Now, that's a brutal story, but God had his reasons and God is always right. Whether you agree with it or understand why uh, God is always right. And that's what God told Saul to do. He said, you make no exceptions. You, I want you to kill every single one of them out because this is a problem that is not going to go away if you don't do things the way I'm telling you to do it to the letter. Well, you know the story, I'm sure. King Saul went to battle. They won the battle. They won the victory, but they didn't Oh, Saul didn't obey God's commandment completely. It was a partial obedience. They went to war. They killed the enemies, but they didn't kill all of them. Saul uh, allowed some to get away. And one in particular was the king of the Amalekites. Okay. King Agag. He spared his life. Well, God told him, that he was supposed to eliminate all of them, including King Agag. But Saul didn't obey. It was a partial obedience. But partial obedience is still disobedience. When God gives you an instruction, he expects you to fulfill it completely, 100%. Not 75% of it, not 50% of it, not even 90% of it. He wants it done 100%. Full obedience. Well, Saul did not fully obey the instruction of God. And so when Saul disobeyed God's commandment, that was like the straw that broke the camel's back because Saul had been messing up uh, many times even before this. And at, by this time, God said, you know what? I'm fed up with Saul. I've, showed, I've given him a lot of opportunities to get things right. I've had a lot of patience with Saul, but now my patience has run out. And let me tell you something. When God's patience with you runs out, you're in trouble. Our God is very long-suffering. Thank God for his great mercy and patience. But when God's patience runs out, you're in big trouble. And Saul found himself in big trouble with God because in 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, verse number 28, this is what God said to uh, Saul through his prophet Samuel. And Samuel said unto him, unto Saul, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. 
And we know who that neighbor was. It was David. God took, because of Saul's disobedience, God took the kingdom away from Saul and instead gave it to David. And we all know that even though David was not perfect either, David had some serious flaws, but he was a way better king than Saul was. But the sad part of this story was how that Saul ruined the great potential that he had as the first king. Saul started out his career as, as the, the first king of Israel. He started out very well, but he ended up really bad. So many lessons to be learned from this. But the one lesson I want you to learn for the purpose of this particular video is this. You are, ir you are replaceable. Do not think that you are irreplaceable. Saul was replaced by David. And David took things to a whole nother level. David obeyed God way more and way better than Saul. David had his flaws. David wasn't perfect either. Far from it. You know the stories of David and how badly he messed up at times, but not like Saul. David was a man after God's own heart despite his flaws, and he did a much better job with Israel than Saul ever did. And so the lesson to be learned here for today is this. Don't get too high and mighty. High-mindedness, the Bible says. Don't, don't get to thinking more of yourself than you ought to. Be careful with the sin of pride. God wants to use you. God wants to do great things with your life and through your life to be a great blessing to others. But if you, won't, if you don't do your job, God can very easily replace you with someone else who will do it, and he might even replace you with someone else that will do it even better than you. So do not make the mistake of thinking that you are irreplaceable. Let's be obedient to the Lord, and let's take advantage of every opportunity that God gives us to do wonderful things for his honor and glory. God bless you.